Hello everyone and thank you for your interest in this Community History webinar series. This series is de designed to showcase community and local history projects from throughout Canada. In each webinar we will learn from project coordinators as they discuss their local history, the framework of the project, and highlight challenges they may have faced along the way. My name is Jessica Knapp and I am the Online Engagement Coordinator for Canada's History Society and I will be your host. Canada's History Society is thrilled to be able to offer this webinar series as we are dedicated to promoting greater popular interest in Canadian history, principally through our publishing, education, and recognition program. To learn more about Canada's History Society, please go to www.canadashistory.ca. Today's webinar features Chris Folds. Chris Folds has a passion for history that drew her to museum work in the 1980s when she started her career at the MSA Museum Society. She spent 25 years there learning about Abbotsford's unique and colorful heritage, working with the community, developing collections, and expanding the exhibition and education programs. She participated on the Planning and Development Committee for the Abbotsford Cultural Center, which opened the Reach Gallery Museum in 2008 and she was honored to be offered the position of the co of collections manager for the new facility. Chris, along with the other members of the REACH staff team, works to celebrate the community through stories of its citizens and creative expression of its artists. I would now like to welcome Chris to begin her presentation. Hi everybody, I'm glad you could join me today. Um, first, I'd like to thank Jessica for inviting me to participate in Canada's History webinar series and to thank uh, Canada's History for actually providing this platform to present the stories and to highlight the work of the many people uh, who collect, preserve, and make history accessible through exhibitions, education programs, publications, and art practice. So as Jessica said, I've been a historian for professionally for about 30 years. I can trace my passion for the past to a single high school teacher who made history fascinating through the way he taught. Uh, not the names and dates kind of history that's bored students for generations, but the personal um, can be humorous, sometimes gut-wrenching history that really resonates, shifts our thinking, and drives understanding and change. Uh, in the ongoing discovery, documentation, preservation of history, I've had the opportunity to meet with hundreds of people who have lived the history that is my passion and thankfully my job to capture. I've had the opportunity to listen to their stories and, and by doing so to see history through their eyes. And these are just a few of my favorites here. So beyond what we can personally experience, stories can take us and teach us. Uh, this is the history that I work to present. Uh, rather than teaching history so much, uh, what I do is I aspire to inspire young historians to discover it for themselves. And um, that's what was done for me. So before I tell you about our current exhibition, Voices of the Valley, a little history. Ha ha ha. Um, my role at Curator of Collections, and that's me in the middle there, uh, is to collect and record community history to steward the collection, but especially make history accessible to my community, the city of uh, Abbotsford in British Columbia. So Abbotsford Inc. came into being on January 1st, 1995, and it was the amalgamation of three original governmental bodies. Uh, Abbotsford is one of the fastest growing communities in Canada and one of the most culturally diverse. Uh, when the city came into being, and this is the begats, we call this the begats, uh, heritage was severely underserved. Uh, the new civic government was aware of this, and they were reasonably sympathetic, and immediately they began to sponsor studies to determine the community's arts, heritage, and cultural needs. Um, but it did take 10 years before serious movement toward addressing the lack of a community facility was addressed. So it went to referendum, of course, as many of these big money decisions do. So following a successful 2006 referendum, construction on the Abbotsford Cultural Center began. Uh, now operating as the Reach Gallery Museum, it is a not-for-profit arts and cultural organization that officially opened in September 2008. The Reach is located on the unceded territory of the Matsqui and the Samath First Nations, both part of the Stalo Nation, whose territory includes land from Fort Langley to Yale. 
The Stalo people have lived in this territory for more than 10,000 years, and I'm really honored to live and work where so much history resides. So as the name implies, uh, the Reach Gallery Museum was developed with a dual mandate uh, to preserve and share the stories of Abbotsford's rich and diverse cultural heritage, but also to showcase the best in arts from both inside and outside the community. Um, our year-long opening exhibition, uh, as this is pictured here, was designed with that in mind and to give the community a chance to see themselves in their museum, their history, their art, uh, not, as, um, not as separate entities, but complementary to each other. And so through this view, you can kind of see the historical exhibition in the foreground and the art installation in the back. And that was juried from among local artists. So it really began with a completely dual mandate. Uh, as most of the exhibitions, uh, sorry, um, the exhibitions that came after that one were all shorter uh, and mainly contemporary art in focus. So they lasted between three and four months. And this was to encourage the community to begin a pattern of visiting more, or more frequently. Um, with the original museum, Trithui House, uh, people would not come regularly. They'd come when Aunt Martha came and not much beyond that. Um, but with it changing quickly, it was a bit of a challenge for me. So as most of the exhibitions, art exhibitions were loaned, it was challenging to integrate the art and local heritage plus, uh, uh, sorry, thus history exhibitions became increasingly standalone. Uh, for a historian working to create exhibitions with a depth of content, it was a breakneck speed, let's face it. Uh, for several years, I produced a series of small thematic local history exhibitions called Our Communities, Our Stories, and they, they uh, fit with the regular three to four months changeover. So although these were really well received by the community, they really failed to connect with the schools, which as you probably know is one of our huge markets. Um, the development of the exhibitions themselves was challenging enough, but the development of curriculum relevant programming in conjunction was really beyond the capacity of a single person heritage department. Um, I was asked many times for something more permanent that focus on, focuses on significant watershed moments and that encourages deeper consideration of and prov provides an access point to uh, local history, uh, something more thought prov provoking. So the change in curriculum in BC and a re-examination of curatorial direction here at the REACH afforded the opportunity and impetus to move in that direction in 2015. So the REACH had been born out of a desire for a, quote, real museum, originally a project of, but as the project developed, the successor to the local Heritage House Museum. And that's pictured here. This is Trithui House. It's an absolutely beautiful 1920s arts and crafts bungalow. The uh, museum transferred its archives to the REACH. Uh, it had long been established uh, through community consultation that the community wanted a broader venue for visitor experience that really could move beyond this uh, settler timber baron narrative because Trithui House was built by Joseph Ogle Trithui and he was the man who ran the huge logging company that employed half the town. Uh, so when the REACH was constructed and established as a separate entity, the MSA Museum transferred the archives and photographic collection to us. Uh, where the new state-of-the-art purpose-built lead silver building provided optimum storage conditions. As you can imagine, a frame house was not optimum to storage of any of those things. Uh, the original material culture collection was split, split from the founding museum's holdings, a move that fragmented our storylines and left each organization with some gaps that have challenged our ability to produce uh, meaningful, deep storylines. In the intervening years, the REACH collections, particularly the archives uh, and photo collections, have grown and provided the foundation for a really well-used collections access portal containing our online photo archives. Uh, the REACH and the MSA Museum Society rebranded Heritage Abbotsford in 2017 uh, have shared goals, and that's kind of what's shown here, um, in regards to providing heritage services. 2015 also saw a change at the museum as well as the REACH, including a re-examination of the programming direction and an interest in collaboration. Uh, this was good news to us. 
Beyond that, the two organizations began to explore the possibility of amalgamation, uh, with the possibility of reconnecting those collections, drawing on the expertise of two staff teams to establish one Department of Heritage Services with an expanded capacity. Uh, expansion of programming at Trithui House, the home of Heritage Abbotsford, and the development of a static local history museum at the Reach. So that's what brings me to what I'm here to talk about today, Voices of the Valley. Uh, the current, finally, museum exhibition, actually the first permanent exhibition at the Reach, Voices of the Valley, and the associated educational and engagement activities that helped the Reach to win the 2016 Governor General's History Award for Excellence in Community Programming. Um, the museum and the REACH began joint planning on this exhibition in 2015. Uh, the exhibition development team was comprised of the two collections managers, myself and the uh, museum collection manager, with support of a couple of other staff members, my archives assistant and her museum assistant. The team by, began by establishing a process, uh, a timeline for exhibition development, and more importantly, focused on how to maximize programming opportunities for the planned exhibition. So to really embed programming in exhibition development. Echoing how the REACH encourages exploration of contemporary art through visual thinking strategies, the team chose heritage thinking concepts as the foundation for the development of this exhibition. So development began using the six historical thinking concepts created by the Historical Thinking Project to engage audiences by fostering historical literacy. Uh, these concepts are included in curriculum around the country and more importantly to us here in BC. Uh, historical thinking concepts provoke critical thinking and help audiences realize that history is a series of decisions and events with significant consequences that have shaped our present and to recognize that the decisions we make today will shape the future. If you're not familiar with the concepts, they are historical significance. And what you're seeing here are some of the um, uh, worksheets from our online um, user guide. Understanding that we can't collect and remember everything, uh, what and who should be collected and remembered? Uh, was it important at the time? Does it have lasting consequences? Is it representative of a historical issue or a trend? Evidence and interpretation. Do we have enough trustworthy evidence to understand and interpret this? Continuity and change. What constants exist over time? What has changed? What or who drove that change? Cause and consequence. Who or what triggered this? What are the repercussions? Historical perspective. How do we see beyond contemporary concerns and beliefs to understand and empathize with the motivation and values at work in the past? And, uh, ethical judgment. What has happened in the what was what happened in the past fair and just? And I think we can think of some examples where it was not. Have we considered the interest and perspectives of everyone involved? What do we do with the information now that we know? So this is our actual working board from the beginning. The exhibition team asked ourselves and consulted with others, what are the events that changed the course of Abbotsford history? What past actions are still reverberating in the present? Uh, there were several answers to all of these. Consideration of these questions led us to agree on eight themes that were significant to the development of the city of Abbotsford and provided the foundation for assessment of content within each theme. So the themes selected are, First Nations, of course. Uh, although the Stalo have always been included in museum exhibitions, they have, for the most part, been left in the past. Um, it's important to support the Stolo people's uh, struggle for recognition of their place in this community and their battle to seek re restitution for what was lost at the hands of the colonizers. This is definitely a community that is very much active today. Survey and settlement. Well, uh, a place for the pioneer stories that, uh, that have always existed. But now, uh, including an indigenous viewpoint about the influx of settlers and the quantification of the land. Forestry. This was our community's most significant forest uh, industry that influenced settlement patterns, drove the early economy, and paved the way for agriculture. 
This is Sumas Drainage. Uh, this was a settler-driven initiative that exposed 30,000 acres of some of the most productive farmland in Canada by draining a lake vital to Stolo cultural culture and survival. Uh, brick making. Uh, Abbotsford was home to the Claiborne brick industry uh, with a hundred year legacy of uh, community building and economic contribution, but also an enduring impact on the environment. Agriculture, well, it's Abbotsford. We live and breathe agriculture here, uh, but it's becoming increasingly industrialized and is under threat as a result of the community's rapid population growth. Economy, uh, its effect on our settlement patterns and neighborhood and community development. Transportation, our transportation uh, infrastructure literally put Abbotsford on the map. That's where we got our name, was currying favor with a superintendent that brought the CPR through our community. Uh, the Fraser River, the original route to the gold fields that brought the first white settlers, and a gateway between the Canada and US. So even pre preliminary research showed that every theme contained conflicting perspectives. It's also obvious uh, that records of how history unfolded was assuredly, in quotation marks, written by the victor. Uh, closer examination showed that evidence remained to provide sufficient content to throw what was recorded open for re-examination. Uh, clues derived from the material the team was able to source to prove historical significance uh, was included to allow students, particularly, to discover and interpret for themselves how events that occurred years in the past could be so relevant today. And so you've seen that between the last two slides. Uh, members of the team conducted extensive research on each of the themes. Uh, we drew on archival material, oral histories, collections resources, and in consultation with outside experts. So those are people that are still in our community with uh, oral knowledge. Um, for each narrative, we established a timeline that we created to track cause and effect. Uh, vital to the development of the exhibition was capturing and exposing the multiple perspectives that existed. Uh, the attitudes and responses contemporary to the events in comparison to how we view them today, and content that provides evidence to allow reevaluation of past decisions. Each narrative is absolutely infused with personal stories. So glean from primary resources. Uh, the first person lived accounts allow visitors to the exhibition or to the education portal the opportunity to explore a wider world view, uh, possibly for the first time seeing historical events through a new lens and with the potential to expand or conflict with their personal knowledge and understanding. So this is related to uh, the Sumas Lake drainage. Uh, this is canoeing down a major intersection on our prairie. Uh, you can see how that would be annoying to the set. When the exhaustive research required for narrative development was complete, the next step of the exhibition progress moved <laughs> quickly. Collections materials, artifacts, photos, documents were selected. Materials were chosen to illustrate the narratives, of course, and for provenance that could elaborate on the content, so give some real depth to the narratives, and encourage intergenerational dialogue. So imagine, or think to yourself, Grandpa, what did they use that for? Or I used to use one of those too. Uh, on my way through Voices of the Valley, I overheard a middle-aged adult say to his elder that he had never seen a PV before. So the PV is, is uh, center with the big hook there. Uh, the elder replied, somewhat uh, surprisingly, PVs were everywhere. Everyone in town had one. You had to have one to be able to make, move a big log by yourself followed by an in-depth personal account, which I you know, eavesdropped on. So, so much information that could have been lost in one generation, but for the artifacts and the stories to illustrate them. So, to facilitate education programming in already in development, the REACH graphics designer developed icons for each theme to clearly illustrate the interconnectedness of the narratives. So these would be included in all forms of the content, wherever the content related to the representative theme. Multiple icons represent far-reaching connections. So the blue with the looks like the wave is, is the, the uh, local for Stalo people because they are the people of the river. And in any, any 
photograph, any piece of text, any object that is relative to that history through all the themes is obvious. So students coming in who are particularly interested in Stalo history um, can follow that through pretty easily. To deliver the content in a passive but engaging, thought-provoking way, the narratives were edited for length and formatted into PowerPoint presentations using archival photographs and incorporating oral history excerpts and provided on continuous loop playback on four monitors in the exhibition space. So anyone that's involved in museums, exhibitions now know that there has to be something on a monitor. There's a certain um, demographic that will only recognize things that way. To provide the tantalizing glimpse of additional depth, Voices has to offer shorter didactic panels were created for all eight themes and installed adjacent to the exhibition cases. And so here's where we explain the um, explain the icons. For those that count on seeing them, like me, the traditional familiar white card labels were made to accompany the artifacts inside the exhibition cases. For visitors that have the curiosity and the time, and this happens sometimes over multiple visits, uh, to fully explore the Voices of the Valley experience, we installed these three tablets in the exhibition space to provide public access to the full content of each narrative. And these narratives are are quite in-depth. Uh, the exhibition and associated programming is supported by the REACH's online collections portal, where visitors can access almost 40,000 local history images with associated context and learn more about the REACH material culture collection. Uh, in this way, the entire material culture collection, not the, just the artifacts selected for the exhibition, are made available for consideration and study. Uh, the Voices of the Valley First Nations Artifact Collection website was created for the REACH to accompany Voices of the Valley by UBC Master of Archival Studies, Master of Library and Information Studies students. Uh, the website contains content about all of the First Nations artifacts in the REACH collection, as well as those loaned by Heritage Abbotsford for the exhibition. So it's great that we had practicum students that uh, could use what uh, we needed as a learning uh, practicum and create this real highlight on our, on our website. So programming was designed to meet the needs of on- and off-site users and to meet the projected learning outcomes established in the BC curriculum. Uh, an online education program consisting of teachers and students learning packages comprised of a series of activities that support project-based learning and employing the big six six historical thinking concepts was developed for distance users. And this is actually our website. Uh, the activities included excerpted narrative material and exhibition content, but they're completely standalone. They do not require a visit to the exhibition to access the treasure trove of content developed for its implementation. Uh, although they do provide an excellent pre or post visit activity, uh, which is generally how they're used. Both kits are available on the REACH, Reach website as free downloads and were launched at the same time as the exhibition during Heritage Week 2016. So a second series of exhibition-related historical thinking activities that echo the online packages was developed with the support of the Rotary Club of Abbotsford. We're always pleased to have their interest and their support. Uh, the classroom engagement kits include hard copy activity cards, prints of archival photographs, and education collection artifacts for hands-on learning. A complementary classroom engagement series developed in conjunction with the Heritage Learning Kits and that fulfills the REACH's contemporary art education mandate includes visual thinking education program activity cards, photos, and hands-on materials. Each mandate-specific classroom uh, engagement kit has two learning levels, grades 1 to 4 and grades 5 to 8. Both classroom engagement programs include aspects of the other. So art activities in the Voices of the Valley kit and voices related content in the art kit. A third series of activities was developed as part of the REACH Tour and Try Field Trip program. Uh, tours, of the, tours of Voices of the Valley are provided by a team of docents. We're very lucky to have um, a number of retired teachers who have the expertise and the passion to engage young minds. And coordinated TRI activities include 
uh, the Great Debate. And the Great Debate uh, is a closer examination of the drainage of Sumas Lake. Sumas Lake was a vast, shallow lake, vital to the local First Nations culture, but an absolute baby settlement in the developing agricultural industry. Uh, the drainage during the 1920s triggered a catastrophic change for the Stalo, uh, but launched the foundation of the agriculture for which the community has been known and is known today. Uh, at present, the farmland created by the drainage is protected under the Agricultural Land Reserve, but is under threat from industrial and residential encroachment, with applications pending for the release of land for development. Uh, the Stalo have initiated legal action to gain restitution for what was taken from them. As agriculture becomes increasingly industrialized, environmentalists enter the debates and seek ways to protect the former lake bottom and future food security. So what the Great Debate does is it provides packages of information from which students assigned to represent each of these factions must make a case in their favor to drain or not to drain, preserve or develop. To what are the Stalo entitled? These are decisions these students will have to face themselves in the not too distant future. So history detectives provides activities uh, that illustrate what primary source documents, photographs and objects can teach us about the past and, to some extent, about human ingenuity. Uh, groups of students are provided with an education collection artifact and asked to speculate and offer their understanding of the object to the class. What is it? How was it used? Who used it? Is there a contemporary adaptation? Why was it improved, if it was? Finally, the fourth engagement activity is provided to casual drop-in visitors. A handout that explains the Big Six, invites them to view the exhibition with a more critical eye, and offers talking points about the exhibition. So the REACH offers regular guided tours of Voices of the Valley and provides off-site research program, outreach programs that address aspects of the exhibition content as preparation or follow-up to a visit. We offer presentations on the Sumas Drainage Project, which illustrates um, the historic flooding issues that you saw in one of the slides, examines the details of this massive drainage project. This was the uh, largest earth-moving project in Dominion history at its time. Uh, the subsequent land use and settlement as well as contemporary land claims issues and accelerating threats to the land. Uh, forestry, the industry that literally changed the face of Abbotsford. Uh, forestry in the form of the Abbotsford Lumber Company, which ties back to Trithui House, was the leading employer in the community. It attracted settlement by providing necessary employment, and as a result of its vast logging operations, added to the quantity of arable land available. As a victim of its own success, it provided the impetus for the shift from forestry to agriculture. Face of Abbotsford, based on the artwork of the same name created for the REACH opening exhibition to visualize Abbotsford demographics, uh, Face of Abbotsford uh, follows population growth and evolution from indigenous occupation through waves of immigration and examines issues of bias and integration and cultural demographics. Uh, in delivering programs, I'm often told, I didn't know that, even from longtime residents. To hear that someone has learned something or that they've enjoyed hearing about history is the moment for me. Uh, group programs have also afforded the opportunity to engage with broader audiences. Uh, a lot of the people that attend my presentations attend because they have some connection or some familiarity with the uh, topic matter and have come with something relevant to add or to share so that I can come away from those programs uh, informed as well. Uh, opening Voices of the Valley and the delivery of the associated programs uh, work much the same way as the digitization of the photo collection. Uh, by providing access, we have initiated and invited feedback that has helped us correct inaccuracies and that provided additional valuable content to the historical record. In the two years that it has been in place, Voices of the Valleys, especially due to the phenomenal publicity it received as winning, uh, having received the Governor General's Award, sorry, there's our photo, uh, drawn attention to the REACH and its program, has had the added effect of promoting collections acquisition, so we've had some really fabulous additions, 
encourage sharing of new stories that provide depth and personal meaning to exhibitions and programs. It's come to the attention of our community that we're just not here to tell them history, that we are also here to learn it. So it's been an absolute godsend for that. It's also helped the REACH build momentum in relationships with teachers who can see now what the REACH can do to support them and who now seek access to the programs the REACH offers and it has encouraged growth in field trip attendance. Although, uh, and these are some of the cases of Voices of the Valley, some of the objects. Although the amalgamation of the REACH and Heritage Abbotsford has not occurred, uh, working to create a joint exhibition created a unity that had not existed prior to that. Uh, in 2016, Heritage Abbotsford requested that the REACH partner to coordinate the Fraser Valley Regional Heritage Fair. And this is something that I began when I was at the museum, so I was absolutely delighted to step back in. Uh, in 2017, when Heritage Abbotsford uh, lacked capacity to continue in the coordination role, they asked that we take it over completely, ensuring that this really valuable educational program co coordinated by the BC Heritage Fair Society not be lost. And if there's a program that uh, develops young historians, it's this one. Uh, Voices of the Valley Online Education Kit supports the fair's program as an introduction to project-based learning and heritage thinking and as a foundation for student project development. Uh, the REACH partners with the South Asian Studies Institute at the University of the Fraser Valley and the Khalsa Dewan Society to deliver exhibitions and programming at the Sikh Heritage Museum in the Gur Sikh Temple. So our beautiful Gur Sikh Temple is the oldest extant temple in the Western Hemisphere, which speaks to the, uh, the longevity of our, our South Asian community here. It was constructed between 1908 and 1911 and is representative of the extensive Sikh history and, and current population, about 20% overall. Uh, the REACH is able to support SASE with technical and community heritage expertise and access to collections. And the complementary nature of the Sikh Heritage Museum's exhibitions and Voices of the Valley benefits both organizations with real bi-directional uh, usership. One, someone will visit one and then go to the other. So uh, an incredible and positive as it has been, uh, feedback has received I'll get these lips working, revealed aspects of Voices of the Valley that, that really don't fulfill their potential in regards to meeting curriculum requirements. Um, this provides an opportunity for improvement and advancement. Feedback is always helpful. During 2018, I'm working to conduct an outreach program that will source additional content material that looks at community settlement aspect of forestry and relates both historical and contemporary immigration patterns to community demographics and development. So those two things will, will work better for our teachers. Um, we're also looking at developing seasonal additions to Voices of the Valley uh, that teachers have specifically asked for. Uh, so Abbotsford Remembers is, is what we're working on now, what I'm working on now, uh, because students can only remember what they learn. Abbotsford Remembers uh, looks at the home front, which was the battlefront at home, that drew on the public to support the war effort in any way they could. And these are local high school students that in uh, 1943 undertook uh, aircraft design to prepare them to leave high school and enter a world that sadly was at war. It also looks at um, the impact that World War II had on Canadian children and youth. And it asks the students to consider how a similar event might impact them. Um, it's available, to, will be available to download, it includes archival photos, copies of news articles, excerpts of oral histories, and worksheets. In 2019, Abbotsford Group members will also be available as a classroom engagement kit format. Uh, the REACH is continually working to grow and develop our collections to ensure that they are representative of our fast-growing, and by that, ever-changing, uh, diverse community and to provide programs that make them accessible and useful. Uh, Voices of the Valley has really gone a long way toward that, that goal. So that's my talk and my slideshow. So if you have any questions, I would be really pleased to answer them.
Excellent. I just want to start off by saying thank you so much, Chris. This was a great, great presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. I um, I learned so much, and the thought, the amount of planning and work that goes into designing an exhibition like this is just it's spectacular. And and you know I've been connected and. I've known about the, the work that you've done for a little while now, but um, I still did not know, you know, the depth of it. And so I really loved how you took the time to go through the historical thinking concepts and the ways, the, the many ways that they're incorporated into this exhibition, as well as the educational outreach components. I think that is absolutely phenomenal, and I'm sure Peter Satius and and Lindsay Gibson and everybody who's in that historical thinking project team would be very impressed and are very impressed with the work that, that you are doing with the historical thinking concepts. I really like that um, you connected with the UBC students to design that website and make uh, those artifacts ac digitally accessible um, and connected that to the exhibition as well. I think that was that's a great example of outreach um, and a way to get young historians and young museum and archival professionals involved in the work that museums are doing, uh, especially in, in their communities. Um, I think it's phenomenal that the education packages that you talked about don't require um, teachers and students to actually visit the museum. Uh, obviously that is important and we want to encourage people to actually go to the museum, but uh, in terms of accessibility, it's very important uh, to realize that not everybody's going to make it and to be able to make those materials still accessible and support people in the classroom. So, uh, again, I'm so impressed. Um, the Great Debate, that is the Sumas uh, Lake, I think that's, that's incredible and so relevant, right, uh, to your community, to the students, um, and like you said, uh, asks them to thoroughly think through questions that they are going to have to answer very soon, right? Um, so I, I love that they're, you are preparing them to be active and engaged citizens there. It's also central to the reconciliation discussions. And in our community right now, where we have a huge environmental focus uh, with the Trans Mountain Pipeline, so what the environment environmentalists are doing are really front and center. So asking the students to look at all those points of view and to really consider just beyond what they think or what they feel, but what would have been the best thing? How can you possibly decide? And applying that going forward, right? Um, just because a decision was made in the past doesn't mean we have to continue making that decision in the future. And if we are going to change things, what do we have to take into consideration to to prepare ourselves to make those changes. Uh, I think that's great. And thank you for mentioning reconciliation. And I hope, uh, I mean, we might as well get to that question right now. I'm not going to hope to get to it. We're going to get to it right now. Um, Chris, can you take um, a few minutes to talk about uh, the relationship building with the Stolo, the local indigenous communities, and the incorporation of their histories into the work of the REACH? And, and tell me a bit about that experience, uh, mm -hmm. what the museum's practice has been before, uh, what you're planning on doing in the future. Uh, well, from the time the REACH opened, uh, it was in our mandate to support our local uh, First Nations community. And so we've done several exhibitions in partnership with them, not just only consultation, but in partnership. Um, one of them was uh, Atikwilatsa, and Tikwilatsa was uh, a man who was turned to stone in an encounter with one of the Hals, uh, the, the, the transformers who passed through this area many years ago. And he, um, when the people fled um, because he was now stone, uh, Tikwilatsa was left and the colonizers took him away. They kidnapped him and they took him to the U.S. And only a few years ago, he was found and brought back to Canada and brought back to the care and keeping of his family members. And so uh, one of our first exhibitions talked about that and the ties to the land and the creation stories that exist here. And how long, how very long a history that is. And the connections of responsibility to not only your community, but to the land. 
And so that was very positive. And then last year, we took a quite a different look at reconciliation. We worked with uh, artists, and this is with the galleries beside, um, although our programming was very complimentary with voices. And it was called Grand Theft Terra Firma. And David Campion and Sandra Shields did an exhibition that was based on Grand Theft Auto. And it, uh, it um, sort of gauged the Uh, colonizers as beginning with a baddie in London and then you had to pick your avatar and the avatars would be the school marm or the preacher or the rum runner or the farmer or whatever there there were several of those um, and then all of the screens showed uh, historical personal um, moments from our local community um, with contemporary First Nations people so to remind people that this is not a past that, that these events that, that uh, occurred to the Stahl people very much have a current impact on them. And so it was really in your face. It was also very tongue-in-cheek. Um, and it exposed a lot of really sensitive um, material in a way that um, young people particularly had a capacity to understand. So it was an outstanding exhibition um, in that way. And so we continued to work with the community uh, to produce those exhibitions. Um, you saw in one of our opening slides our big welcome figure, uh, um, Hedelec. Hedelec is uh, he's carved from one piece of cedar by two uh, local uh, Indigenous artists. And uh, Hedelec, there's a Hedelec in every generation of the Stalo people. And his role is to protect and to teach. And the original Hedelec was well over seven feet tall. He was a a warrior chieftain of this area. He had wives, uh, marriage um, connections as far as South America to improve relations and the uh, economic interchange. Um, and he is right there in our lobby to remind people that you know we are here. The reach is located, as we all are, in Abbotsford on unceded First Nations territory. And so it's it's absolutely incumbent on us to recognize that. I mean, we're, we're not here. You know, we weren't invited to be here, and we don't. You know, we really have to consider how the First Nations feel about that and move forward on a more equal ground. Thank you so for taking us through uh, the brief history of the Reach and reconciliation and the storytelling. And I love um, that you were able to infuse uh, different pieces of that story in, into that summary. And uh, we've all just continued to to learn a little bit more. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I want to make sure we get to this today because it's a question I've been asking each webinar presenter, which is about the challenges that they faced um, throughout uh, their particular projects. And um, it's really great to see um, a project like this and have you take us through um, each component of it and uh, in a very detailed way. Um, but we know that these projects don't happen uh, without their own challenges. So I want, would like to invite you to take a minute to walk us through a few of them and, and how you and your team dealt with that and uh, what you've learned. Well, there were several challenges. Um, bringing together two staff teams uh, who were already pretty busy um, was the first of those. Um, and it turned out that once we settled on a few basic rules. We worked really phenomenally well together. Um, the next decision was how do you whittle down, because the Voices of the Valley, the physical space allotted to that is not very big. I don't know if you noticed, but it's like a big wide corridor. Um, how do we tell a complete and rich and deep story, um, but with the, in a very concise manner? Um, so that took some consideration, and it was uh, several meetings on, on how these stories tie in, how do we define them, and as you heard later, I mean, they haven't been perfect. There's a couple I'm looking at adapting now that are a little weak. Some of them have been great, some of them haven't. Um, integrating, I think, right from the get-go, this is really the first exhibition that I've ever curated that began um, with the programming. Uh, it wasn't an exhibition that we created an exhibition for that. And then thought, well, how will we program this? Um, right from the beginning, we embedded programming in the exhibition. 
And so that added a level of consideration and work to every single step along the way. Um, so we had a little bit of extra help. I was able to hire a, a, a contract worker to help with the actual production of the education packages, so that was helpful. Um, and as I said, and let's go back to whatever slide we're in here. I want to show you. It's, it is, I think it's one of these. Oops. Oh, oh, oh. Like we are in a hallway. Look at this. See, now here's where the icons, you can see the icons here and how they work, how the stories interrelate. Thank you, Chris. So in the corridor are doors. There are two massive, massive garage doors. Uh, there are vents and <laughs> washroom entrances and all that kind of thing. And so how to make that work and look aesthetically pleasing. And what we found was that garage doors with their big glass panels make the best picture frames. And so we filled them with vinyl photos. We filled every space with that. We brought uh, the cases in, and it worked really well. So I would say that for the first time, you know, taking an exhibition from beginning to end, embedding the programming from the beginning, because that was a bit of a learning curve for me. Thank you for that, telling us about them. I think that's so interesting that uh, the programming led the design and the creation of the exhibition. Uh, can you talk a bit about that for for us, I'm wondering why that doesn't happen all the time um, and why it's so special that it has happened this time. Um, well, I think it happens more frequently now. I, I think um, museum program, we finally see that it's the programming that brings the people as much as the exhibition. Uh, certainly that's true with the art exhibitions. You have to um, You have to show people what they're looking at and how, how to look at it. Um, we've always, I think, um, spoken in a very, very editorial voice through our exhibitions. This is what I've learned. This is what I want you to know. Um, and that's not how we approach this. Um, we realized that it was a fabulous learning experience for us. And we wanted everyone who visited to have a similar uh, opportunity of discovery. Um, and I think well, this is the first really long-term exhibition I've done at the Reach because of the because of the uh, contemporary art focus. Um, so it was really my first chance to try that out, and to have it be so phenomenally successful. I think has really shown even larger institutions that uh, you have to start with programming. It's not it's not an outcome of your exhibition. Your exhibition has to be there. More importantly, to support the programming, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I think for that this concept, this approach, will definitely inspire others to take this on as well. I can see how sometimes it might be um, explained away by the fact that it, it might take more advanced work, um, and you know, people are coming to see the exhibitions, but obviously as you've just outlined for us, that, that they go hand in hand, right? Um, they need each other uh, to thrive and, and to p put something out there that's super engaging. Um, and also, I love the idea that you're, you're so involved in the education community and that you are actually taking requests from educators about the different themes and the, the different additions that will be made to the Voices of the Valley. I think that is a great way to involve that community. Did you want to talk briefly about that? Um, yeah, I did, because we have always done field trips. Even at the museum, we did field trips. Um, and it's um, really helpful to have some feedback on that. You know, um, we can use our best experience in education, create a program and believe that it will do um, what we, we, we want it to, and we're not always spot on. And, you know, teachers are busy people, and when they take the time to say to you or email you or call you or stay behind after the tour and, and give you a bit of feedback, you really have to take that as a, a, an opportunity to really do a better job to, to reach that audience. Um, and because audiences are so diverse, you know, you can't please all the people all the time, but if I have an opportunity to really um, produce something that is useful to my community, then I'm certainly going to pursue that. Uh, you know, 
I, I want to put my energy where it will be most appreciated and most used. And so, you know, it doesn't take one teacher telling me that that's what they'd like. But when I've heard it, you know, over a career or over the last 10 years or, you know, more than once, or you do something that begins down that road and everybody goes, oh, is there more of that? I hope more of that's coming. Um, then you know you're on the right track. So, um, yeah, and working with our community, all these partnerships, we partner with everybody. I mean, our, to, to get our heritage out there, to, get, um, to bring their interests to the reach. You know, we want, we want our community to be able to see themselves here. Their history is here. Um, art that they produce or are interested here. Um, that's just part and parcel of being connected to your community, is, is taking that feedback and those opportunities to move in Wonderful. a direction. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, this, again, this exhibition is just a great case study for all public historians and members of the public, uh, both in Abbotsford, uh, British Columbia, and Canada, to see how museums are relevant, they are connected to their communities, they are connected to the education um, communities as well. I would like to thank you once again for being here um, and sharing, sharing this information with us today. Mm -hmm.